And I won't stop till both these squirrels get their nuts Hey, huh, you know it's good when we freak in King size squeak in after I ease in If you was with me, baby, 24-7 Best believe that every single day would be a sweet day huh, Girl, you sweeter than a cheesecake If you want beef, prophecy would be a beefcake I make love to you till you fall asleep Leave you with sweet dreams between the sheep This was the night before that night I was born on that day, but not last night Once upon a time, I had my cash right Plug called, he ain't act right I'm far from a slow nigga in this fast life He pulled up, I got low, hit the black light Once upon a time, slimy niggas catch a bad night When bad police die, they don't deserve that kind Once upon a time, they need to feel what God rats like Oh so, so folks feel me like a pack What's good, everybody? It's your man, Big Dom, coming live naturally on the True Players Podcast episode as we embark on the official fourth year anniversary episode of the True Players Podcast, along with my brother, Joey G. We should have the other guests join us a little later in the podcast. So, that we, so Joey G, let's get it, man. What's going on, man? Uh, you already know what it is. I'm just ready for this recap. <laughs> I'm ready for the recap. Talking about what's coming up in the future. Um, introducing you to new co-hosts. Um, speaking with guest hosts. Uh, what do I have for you? <laughs> but more commentary and more good moments to share with y'all. With the family. Drinking my beer. Because mm -hmm. it's an extension of Beer Convo and Family. Just want you to know that. Check that out. Your local time. Exactly. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Exactly. He just dropped his first first official episode, audio only, on Spreaker. Definitely check out that first episode. It was very, very deep, very um, uplifting to know that, you know, someone who I've been friends with over 30 years, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying, been through the struggles, right? been through tribulations, right. misunderstandings, mm -hmm. to triumph to be a great husband, a great father. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It takes mm -hmm. a lot. Only getting. <laughs> he's only getting better, and what uh, and what makes it happen is for people who want to change, who who live um, a life that full of question marks, is be able to look at you, look at yourself in the mirror, and understand it, what are you doing wrong, right. be able to understand it and, and point the finger at yourself, right. and realize that you got to do better. If you want to be better, you got to do better. Mm. All right. So right. bef before we get started with the, with the podcast, because the podcast is about a great subject, entrepreneurship and branding, mm -hmm. and me and Joey G, we're supposed to have um, Mars with us, but um, due to some conflict, he may not be with us today. Okay. Um, so we'll see what happens. You know, I was trying to hope to have some more people on the on the podcast as well. We definitely want um, Prophecy to come on and join us. We'll see what happens. But as we before we start off, I want to give a shout out, give out a big rest in peace to Bill Russell. Um, Boston Celtic Hall of Fame center, 11 time world champion who passed away yesterday at the age of 88. You know, for what I've what I've seen, um, and um, seen of him in the all star game, he seemed to be a very great and gentle man, genuine um, individual, which in which a lot of NBA players looked up to. Uh, Magic Johnson called him his idol, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? So, Dwayne Wade he he, he posted a tweet about Bill Russell. But for the NBA community, a, a big a big loss happened yesterday. Yeah. Eleven time world champion. Eight won eight straight world championships with the Boston Celtics. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Arguably one of the greatest players in the in, in the history of the NBA. And he also mm -hmm. won two championships as a player's player coach. Oh. Yes. So we want we want to wish wish um, pass condolences to the to the to the um, Russell family, mm -hmm. um, prayers. He lived a he lived a long and blessed life, and to the end he he seemed like he was in good spirits, but we don't know what happened. And and to be honest, it's none of our business either. God God called him home, so he went home to God. And we put it like that. All right, 
so let's get to it. Entrepreneurship branding. You know, what what question, bro? Why we be, why do we become podcasters? Why do we um uh, why did we uh embark on our own entrepreneurship on other things such as financial education and yourself with yourself with t-shirts with the Etsy? Why do we do that? And that's that's the key ingredient mm -hmm. to become an entrepreneur. Right. Is your why? What is your why? What do well if I had to define it uh, all out, uh, mm -hmm. to be honest with you, I don't like living paycheck to paycheck with somebody else in control of giving me said money earned. I like to get paid for my service, service rendered. I don't need the middleman to do that for me while you take a percentage and divvy out the rest to my, myself. Right. Uh, lower percentage. <laughs> We're talking lower percentages as far as the paycheck is concerned, and I want a little bit more for what I put out there. So, yeah, that that was the venture. The venture was to get a um, a form of income that was substantial and that could sustain the household, or add to what what was bringing in the household. So that's where we were at as far as that's concerned. It just gives you a little bit more financial freedom to do what you want to do. Um, utilizing the the podcast, the podcasts and being co-host and, and things like that and talking to other people, you get a chance to network and talk about these things, only adding to what you're trying to do. Got you. Got you. Well said, bro. And I, I, I tell you from my from my own experience, you understand what I'm saying. Me working working in the hospital for 12 years, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying. And I, you, we, you, me, and you spoke of, spoke of it offline, mm -hmm. and I felt that a lot of people that I answered to had no business of business of me answering to them. You know, I just felt that it was a clash, clash, not just a clash of ego, it was a clash of um, pigmentation too, because. When you sit there and um, you do your job and people still accuse you of not doing your job, and then when you tell them, when you um, defend yourself, they say you're a bully, they're scared of you right. because you're defending yourself. Right. That for me, that's the reason why I want to, I, I embarked on an entrepreneurship first with the podcast and then with my financial education business. Mm -hmm. um, and these two things inter intertwine with each other because I could always leverage my podcast to, to, to um, you know, promote my financial education business, which I will be doing more this season of the True Place podcast. Right. So I feel that a lot of people need to be educated about um, their finances. People don't realize that seventy percent of the people live in paycheck to paycheck, or just continue their education in financial um, education. Because we, we can't sit there and say that we know everything. Just because no. we have a piece of information doesn't mean we know everything about everything. So yeah. being a student, a tentative student, and, and being able to get this information, that's first and foremost. Mm -hmm. If you're able to spread that information by teaching somebody else, yes, by all means, do that. But have all the information that you need to tell somebody else and do not mislead them with partial, partial information. Because that could be dangerous as well. Absolutely, absolutely, and that's and that's where we go into branding. That's part of your branding. You got to mm -hmm. be transparent. You got to be honest with your clients. You got to be honest with everything. Be transparent all the time because that that affects your branding. Yes, it does. So we you got to understand that it goes with it goes with the territory. You know what I'm saying? But us as financial educators, you know, we're still learning as 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 we go along as well because there's always new things to learn. Right new things to achieve right you know what i'm saying so like i said i'm going back to the hospital analogy i worked there for 12 years due to a certain uh law that well illegal law i call it mm -hmm. you know i was i was forced to leave but it, i tell you leaving there was probably the biggest relief i ever had in my life because i was in a very toxic environment mm -hmm. Again, I was answering the people who did, who subliminally did not like me because of, because of my skin color or what have you, um, or they, my quote unquote attitude. Right. One thing about me is, if you say something stupid, you come at me the wrong way. I'm going to defend myself. Right. Now, if you if you perceive it and re you perceive it and re you receive it as if I'm bullying you, it's that's something that's you got to deal with. Right. Don't start shit with me. There won't be no shit with me. Right. 
Don't be, don't be email gangster typing to the freaking manager that, oh, Dominic cursed me out or some shit. Well, I just told you that what you did was wrong. Mm-hmm. I'm going to sit there and, and keep my mouth shut about things like that. And, you know, when they pull, they talk, talk about that mandate. I was not going to take that, take that injection to stay there. Right. The I was I was already my 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 ass my whole my, own, my everything everything in my body was out of that hospital everything in my soul my soul was out of that hospital a long time ago, right? Just my body was there, right? You know what I'm saying? And you know you deal with some you know I hate toxicity, and that's where you have being an hospital you be able to build your own team f- with genuine people with mm-hmm. good people with good hearts. Or it all for one and one for all. And that's the mentality. Because if you're not about that, you ain't going to make no money. No. no. It's like humanizing yourself mm-hmm. and, and the people around you. You got to you gotta be down to earth. In yeah. order for the business to work, you got to be down to earth. Mm-hmm. Have to be. At least be mm-hmm. able to relate on some level. Understand mm-hmm. an inkling of what people want understanding that understanding mm-hmm. how you can serve somebody else and get paid off of that mm-hmm. bottom line if you are all about the money period good luck in your business making it sustaining itself for generations good luck with that mm-hmm. because after a while people will just get tired of that mm-hmm. because there's no human contact there's no conversation there's no networking there's just plain uh almost like robotic mm-hmm. factory it, it might as well go to a go to a mach- vending machine put your information in get what you want and leave mm-hmm. if that's the case <laughs> if that's what you like if that's <laughs> the formula that you're you're safe with then i guess but i don't see it being lucrative in the long run all right ladies and gentlemen mars has just entered Gonna bring him in. Mars has entered the Mars. Up, <laughs> gentlemen. What's going on, Mars? What's going on? I mean, we just got it started. Uh, me and jo- paradise. Exactly. <laughs> uh, me and Joe, you were just speaking about our why and why we entered the entrepreneur um, realm with our mm-hmm. podcasts and other ventures that we also do on the side. And I don't know if Joe Joey G was finished. If not, I'm gonna let Mar. If you are Joey G, I'm gonna let Mars explain his why. Well, I just I'm just gonna cap it, summarize it so Mars can know where I left off. Basically, it's basically humanizing your brand and people. That's where I was at with it in the mm-hmm. conversation. I was done speaking as far as where I was in conversation. So I'll pass the ball to you and let you uh give your your uh point of view. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I think ultimately it always comes down to freedom, you know what I mean? Right. Mm-hmm. Um for me. I lived a life where I, on paper, did everything right. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. No drugs, no alcohol. Right. Uh, uh, you know, did the college thing, did the corporate thing, did well at the corporate thing, succeeded at every level, um, achieved. But it was just horrifying inside. You know, mm-hmm. just it, it wasn't what I felt I was put on this earth to do. It's all about purpose. Mm-hmm. And um, sometimes it's about opportunity and preparation and all of that. And sometimes it's just about dumb luck. Um, I was just really sick of the corporate world and um, had accumulated some things in, uh, you know, with my 401k. And I said, you know what? I'm going to gamble on myself and mm-hmm. just bet on myself. And I, I literally self taught myself about getting an LLC and self taught myself about podcasting. And I actually went to college for. Uh, mass communications then we didn't have the technology that we have now if you didn't live in a top 40 market if you weren't in california or new york it's really right. hard to get on in the entertainment industry and not only that a lot of times we had to make sacrifices which is something i wasn't willing to do i knew i wasn't hurting so i didn't have to sell my soul if right. a deal wasn't right or something i didn't have to sell my soul because i've always lived below my means and always I spent for what I needed. I always did the right thing. So it gave me an opportunity to have that freedom. And so I just started doing, if you do something you love, Mm -hmm. you're going to work harder because it's not really work. It's kind of like how Kobe 
used to say, you know, y'all consider this practice. I wouldn't want to be anywhere else in the world but here. Right. So mm -hmm. it, it's a different. Those are the people that succeed. And then eventually I started partnering up and growing, you know, my little empire. And, and here we are, you know, merch is selling well. Streams are doing well. Mm -hmm. um, podcasts, the audio is doing well. Um, but we're just growing, you know, and right now it's all about connections and giving back. Because like I said, I, I lived a whole nother life before this podcast thing. <laughs> and now I consider this my second life. So now right. it's just about giving back to people that are younger than me that if they had a platform or if they had someone to say, hey, watch these pitfalls. Hey, do this. Right. So the next generation can have an opportunity to whatever I'm doing at 40. They can do it at 20. You know, that's what right. it's about right now. Facts. Just, just, just have them leave room for us so we could still have more to talk about. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wise sage head set of experience. We're, we're the generation I always tell you know some of my friends or or dim mates as we call them mm -hmm. that are significantly younger than me. I'm like I'm from a generation where I still took a pencil to wind my cassette back. Mm -hmm. but I'm also in the stream. I remember Napster and I remember. The streaming and now I'm right. streaming music on my phone. So I've seen wire. <laughs> computer Ebola. Uh, something bear. <laughs> share bear, share. Some bear, like bear, bear share. share. Bear share. Bear <laughs> share. Yeah, line wire, all of it. Just the computer. I, I don't know what happened to the hard drive, Bob. I don't know. You know, 10 hours. <laughs> Wasn't <screen>. me. <laughs> 20, 24 hours just to download Grand Theft Auto 1. <laughs> How small that game is now, looking back. <laughs> listen, we, we, man, listen, I was downloaded from Audio Galaxy using dial-up. Right. So imagine oh, wow. Wow. 12 hours for one song. Bro, I just told you 24 <laughs> hours dial-up. Grand Theft Auto. <laughs> I, I, I've been there. I, I have been there. So it's amazing when people complain about their phones or man, right. this phone ain't shit. I'm like, you are getting a whole universe on your phone in right. five seconds instead of three seconds, and you're complaining. I'm like, dude, I had to go to Blockbuster. Bro, you have a whole. You have every system that we had growing up that you could put on your phone right now and play all of them at one time. <laughs> Easy. With all the games, <laughs> every single game. I'm like, yo, I I had uh, a Nintendo with one controller. I couldn't even play with my friends. I had a Nintendo, with, and you had to blow. I had asthma growing up. I'm blowing on these damn discs, about to have an asthma. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to hear none of y'all complaining. Oh man, oh. shoot! That, those were the days. It was the good old days, though. I must say, I must say. Um, another question I do have for you guys. Mm -hmm. I want to. I'm gonna. I'm gonna jump around though, because you, we all, we were all witness to a particular episode that didn't make it. Okay. Uh, we're gonna talk about the beer convo on family episode that did not make it because of um, personal situations. Uh, it, was um, it was a branding issue. I considered it. It was a branding. It issue. was. A, it was a branding issue because it not only affected you. It affected me because this particular person was also on my podcast as a co-host. And, you know, truth be told, thank God we didn't put it out for the people to see the podcast. Because it would have affected Mars as well because he's a podcaster. Right. You understand what I'm saying? So, in the interest of fairness, like, yeah. like Vince would say, Vince would say, <laughs> in the interest of fairness, uh, I wasn't going to air it. Okay. I reviewed it. I reviewed it. I looked at every party that was involved in it. And I was fair across the board. Pulling it was the best decision I ever made. And I have no regrets about doing so. Okay. The reason was because I had to protect everybody else's brand first. Mm -hmm. Y'all came as guests on the show. I had to protect everybody's brand. Everybody in the show was in some form of business and right. all represented different brands of themselves mm -hmm. and each other. So that was first and foremost. The second decision I made is because I understood the the fallity, if you, if you will, the people's willingness to fall every once in a while. And I understood that everybody goes through something at different times and we can't be professional all the times. And there's a time where that's not for everybody to see. Mm -hmm. 
this is not the Twitter space and this is not uh, Facebook, MySpace, anything like that. This is something that I, I'm presenting to other peoples as an example of what I think ideas should be or just giving you different perspectives as far as what to look at when thinking about things. Kind of like scientific thinking or analyze, being an analyst or something like that. You get all points of views. You listen to all sides. You make your um, discernment from listening to the information. That's where I was going with it. To be one-sided in conversation and feel that mine is the tell-all, be-all. I don't think that was the appropriate message to bring across. Mm -hmm. This is without getting to specifics on who said what and what was said or anything like that. This is generalizing the whole conversation and boiling it down to my perspective and not putting the podcast out. That's why it was done so in that manner. I felt it was fair across the board. I talked to everybody on the other side of the board to find out. I didn't have your, your information, Mars. I'm sorry, but I'm pretty sure you felt as everybody else. I, I, yeah, yeah. I, and I, I got, it got, the message got to me. So I was cool. I think right. Dom got through, got through with me and I was like, no problem, dog. It's, it's all good. Yeah. No, but I, I, in, in the interest of fairness, I had to make sure that it was, it was taken care of in that fashion. End of, end result. Yes, I was protecting my brand. Also, that's a side effect of making sure everybody else is taken care of. Because once I do that, then I know there's a possibility I could bring everybody back, and there will not be no animosity. There will not be no uh, reserve. I don't know if I want to do that. They'll be willing to do it because they understand that they, I'm trying to do something professional, mm -hmm. and that's. Everything that we're talking about branding, that was a perfect example of why you do what you do or why I'm trying to keep certain things out. Why I don't put materials out constantly yet, because I understand there's a formula to this and I'm making sure that I'm checking boxes and making sure that I'm putting everything forward. My first podcast was officially as an audio but that's because I was comfortable with it. What do the people want to know about this podcast? Did you tell them about the podcast? What, what do you What do you bring into the table that another podcast can't bring to the table? What's your new unique perspective that people are going to tune into you? What are you willing to put on the table so other people can see and associate with? Is it relatable? You know what I'm saying? I put all these things in perspective. This is being a part of the show, watching a whole bunch of <laughs> a whole bunch of podcasts, some mm -hmm. really favorites and some some just for entertainment, to be honest with you. And I'll give you two examples. Mike Tyson's uh <laughs> I love it. Love my <laughs> hot boxing with Mike Tyson and love uh it. all iterations. And, love it. And drink champs are my two favorite up there. Not not saying they're they're my my um my top 10 but they're up there as far as what i liked watching and there's a couple couple others i'm not going to mention their names because i'm just starting to watch them <laughs> but we get people tune in because they they like the people mm -hmm. they like the information being pre uh, presented they can relate to it because the topic is something they're interested in or want to mm -hmm. know something about these are all the reasons why you want a brand. <laughs> you, you want a brand so you can hit those nails mm -hmm. and get a good foundation. Once you get a good foundation, you have something to build on top of. This is where the networking comes in. This is where you meet other people. This is where you co-host. This is where you guest host on a show and things of that nature. This is all a part of it. Is it is it selfish to want to be on somebody else's podcast to promote yourself at the same time be present in somebody else's podcast? <laughs> mm. Not really. Not it... <laughs> at all. That's what it's all about. It's, it's all about community for me. Right. And um, I with with me, it's finding your foothold, like you said. With, there's a, two million podcasts out there, maybe more. There's a new. Right. But it's mm -hmm. not too many that go past those first 30 days because they realize this shit is hard. Right. It is. Schedule, 
booking guests, the money mm -hmm. takes a while to come in. And even then, it's mm -hmm. not going to, you know, they're not just handing out those Joe Rogan deals. To that. Mm -hmm. They're not just, you know, you, we're seeing established pot. The, my inspiration for getting into podcasts, there was uh, two shows that I started off, that I started watching. Mm -hmm. uh, these is Amero. Okay. Uh, Odega Boys podcast. They were my, and I was watching them when they were Deces versus Mero. And I mm -hmm. love that raw Bronx energy. And, you know, it reminded me of my big sisters from the Bronx. <laughs> 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 Just take no shit and the social commentary. And they were super raw and they were super street, but they were super right. intelligent. And it was everything that wasn't me, but I loved what the show represented. And I saw these guys blow up to where they're interviewing Obama and now mm. they broke up. You know, oh. yeah, they, they, they recently broke up and it became about uh, apparently the money and power. So it, it's always those same things that, that you see happen over and over again. Another mm -hmm. influence for me was the Joe Rogan podcast. Okay, he was Just someone that would interview people that he was just curious about. He didn't right. give a shit. If he was knew about it, he was just like, "Oh, I like UFOs. Let, let me talk to a UFO guy." Oh, I like uh, you know. <laughs> this, as simple as that sound. That's pretty much it. <laughs> and, and that was the formation of where I was like, I love music, but I also just love kicking shit with people. And you find out that ultimately, what people are buying is you. Right. You're the brand. They're You're investing the in you. They're investing <laughs> in you because every and the more that you can be authentic to yourself the more that you will find that poor, that you will find that community. And that's when people want to be a den mate. People want to be on the show. People want to be involved and linked into your community. So being your true authentic self, and every day I'm evolving because I, I tell people who I was yesterday is who, not who I am today. Right. I, right. You know, so every day I'm evolving. My views change every single day. But right. ultimately it was about, you know, building the community and the business side will come and that's eventually what happened so for me it's just building out community and just being your true authentic self this is a safe space where you can talk about whatever you want unfiltered unfretted and the beauty about it if you don't like it just turn shit off you know right. you know <laughs> like i said there's two million other podcasts tuned right. to another one but once you get your core and once you get your audience you're good to go. And now it's just respecting that audience and being consistent with it. Right. 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 See, I'm going to tell you, um, I kind of enjoy being a guest of someone else's podcast because being the host is a lot of stress. <laughs> 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 you know what I'm saying? I can just come in there and just sit back and relax and just put my two cents in and go about my business. But when you're right. the host, you're the engineer, you're the producer, you're the writer, you're everything. You gotta shape, you gotta sh uh, sit, you gotta make sure if your guests don't show up and you <laughs> post that your show was at 8 30, the show still gotta go on. Mm -hmm. And that just, you know, the show gotta go on, otherwise you, you lose your credibility. Right. So um, I'm bl I'm blessed to have True Players podcast. I'm blessed to be on Be a Common Friend. I'm blessed I'm being down in the damn podcast. Other podcasts I've been on on as well. Uh, Brian, confession, confession with our fan, Brian Pathia, our classmate since junior high school. I've been on this mm -hmm. podcast talking about relationships and stuff like that. So it, it's a beautiful thing to collaborate with um, podcasters. I'm looking to collaborate with more. Now, isn't he now a radio personality? He's a radio person. He got his own radio he's app. Radio, yeah, he's a radio personality right radio now. Radio app in Orlando, <laughs> in, uh, in Orlando, Florida. So I know he's gonna be watching the episode, but I'm gonna let him know, Brian. I'm gonna be in Orlando in January, so we're gonna have to link up. <laughs> hey, it's we're we're long overdue. We're long yeah. overdue to be on set together. Um, I was invited uh, when I was in Jacksonville to be a part of his poetry. That's mm -hmm. when I was still doing poetry. Um, that would have been awesome, mm -hmm. but uh, due to life, due to life, uh, I wasn't able to do it at the time, but. Not to say that I haven't been watching him grow since then till now. Crazy jump, <laughs> crazy <laughs> jump, and I'm pretty sure it's because of the um, doing the po poetry and networking with people and just building that brand that he has. Like he has, he has an awesome brand of himself, and the way he was able to network to get into the position that he is. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely want to sit down and talk to him. 
And plus, I heard about his rules on the show, so I really want to get with him so I'll learn more about those. Oh, I'm, no. I want, to be in, I want to incorporate those rules on the show because I feel like that should be a mandatory that everybody should put down. And the respect that he, he wants on the forefront of everything, yeah, we, I would love to sit down and talk to him about that and try to incorporate that not only in the True Players podcast, but my own podcast and wherever I represent. True. No, he's no, he's very strict on the on the on before we go live or when he starts the recording, he lets it know what's gonna how is it going to be, and I definitely that's that's some I that's a the some a lesson I took from him while being on this podcast. I'm like, yeah, we gotta I gotta implement that on the show, but with you guys having you guys as hosts, that's not a problem. We already understand that. We only understand the rules, but you know, new people who come in there and uh, with 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 the um, hubris and the arrogance and the ego. Sometimes that needs to be definitely spoken prior, and um, to protect our brand, because right. you know I don't just have the, the True Players Podcast brand. I got my um, I got my all basis basis consulting financial education firm as a brand also. Because when those people look at me, look me up, they're gonna look at look up True Players Podcast as well. They're gonna find it. They're gonna find my Facebook page. They're gonna find my other Facebook pages also. Just mm-hmm. to see who, just to understand who who I am, right? So I have, it. yeah. So you got to protect that. Even though I may say I may curse, say shit and nigga and all that stuff. That's just me being me on a podcast. That's right. not that's not me in a professional it's environment. Inter- you can always separate. Just say, hey, this is entertainment. My my guess what, guys? My real name is a Mars. You know, <laughs> no way. <laughs> Mom did not name me off a planet wrong. She did not be <laughs> in there. But, so you're uh, telling me you don't have a Bob and Digular space modulator? <laughs> <laughs> I do, but it has nothing to do with my career path. But uh, <laughs> it's, it's just ultimately, you know, the, the people understand that when you're on a show, it's it's entertainment. It's it's you. It's your true, authentic self turned up to eleven. We yeah. all, you, yeah. you know, we all know that if in certain social norms. You don't say the things that no. you say. With, you, you don't do it because either what you'll get kicked out or mm-hmm. peace kicked on, which right. I don't want either. I, I, t- I tell everybody, hey, my fighting days are over. Right. <laughs> <laughs> He's saying, like, man, cures only. I, you know, I ain't fighting. No <laughs> it's like watching those fight scenes in movies where the guy's doing all these karate moves and the dude just looks at him, just pulls out a pistol, shoots him, walks away. Like, that's exactly where I'm at in my life right now. Yeah. Like, I don't got time for that. <laughs> like, what is it now? Jones, that, you know, he, the guy's doing all the ninja so He's like, wow. <laughs> <laughs> like, clearly, if we're doing ninja swords, you got this, but luckily, right. I got this friend called four or five. Right. Right. So let me ask you, let me ask you a question, Mars. So you, you're doing the apparel, you're doing two different podcasts where you, one podcast, you, you, you're interviewing rappers, upcoming rappers. Um, how are you able to juggle all of that with all the time, with the time that you have and the planning that goes into it? It's a lot of planning. Uh, my day is booked from 5 a.m. every morning until 11 p.m. every night. Mm -hmm. Um, And I have to because I'm a bit of a stoner and I forget stuff. So I have to literally plan. I get up at 5 a.m. in the morning. I fast. I exercise. I sit in my massage chair, relax, walk the dog, get myself centered, work on my main hustle. And then I start booking because, like I said, I I have some help. But um, we have down in the den, that's the mothership. Get down in the den after dark. We have uh, the unnamed comic book podcast, which is just launched on. Ep- uh, we're on episode six there, and mm-hmm. Isaac could have produced Pot with Petty, which is a uh, podcast for for the stoners for my people out in California. So I'm doing those, and then we do a uh, politics as usual special. We usually do those quarterly, where we kind of get really into the politics, and then we're filming. Um, we're doing shorts. We're doing marketing now. We're out doing shows and getting getting the den mates together, putting these concerts. And so we're offering mm-hmm. expanding more services, but you still only have the 24 hours. So, right. you know, I get up in the morning. I get myself centered. I do my main hustle. I get my main hustle. I start writing scripts. I start booking. Mm-hmm. I start 
seeing who can I get here. And that's one of the reasons I haven't ventured into live because it gives me the flexibility. I love the live format. I would love to do it. But for me, I'd rather have seven interviews in a can, which I can mm-hmm. air when I want to or peace right. out or ever want to. And it helps me keep my schedule for when people cancel on an interview or don't show up at all, which happens all the time. You guys know. Mm-hmm. Have, yeah. I'm going to be there. I'm going to be there. And then right. you just sit there like, oh, and then it's, oh, man, I, my bad. I died for a little bit. Can we reschedule this? And you're like, what? Mm-hmm. <laughs> you say you died for a little bit? Like, yeah, I died in a car accident, but I'm back um, mm-hmm. <laughs> next week. And it's cool. I never, if someone missed I never flake on them. I never, because I understand life mm-hmm. gets the way, but that's what works for me. And then mm-hmm. I, I make sure to give myself mental re- mental health breaks. Um, yeah. It's nothing for me to say, we're going to be on hiatus for two weeks, watch your old episodes, and mm-hmm. I'll have some other stuff loaded up to keep them entertained so they can still have that content or mm-hmm. secret episodes or clips or things like that. Or I'll, I'll release something that was on, um, you know, behind the paywall. I'll release something. But that's the key. It's just taking mental health. And, and my saying, I say it every episode, you can't pour from an empty cup. And that's what I want, especially for black men, men of color, to mm-hmm. recognize that uh, as, as a man of any color, you have mm-hmm. an inordinate amount of pressure. And I think that's something that we should be able to comfortably talk about. You're If you're a man, if you're a cisgender man, you're expected to be the breadwinner. You're expected to be the king of the household. You're expected to be the emotional support for everyone. You're expected, and that's a lot of shit. There's yeah. that many human people. And I, I, you know, so, and then like Chris Rock said, we're only love for what we can provide. We're not love, true, especially a, a, a man of color, you know, so mm-hmm. we already look like to everybody, we're the victim or they think we're dead beats or something like that. So we, we come in the game two strikes with the same pressures, if not more than everyone. It, mm-hmm. It's a lot. It's, it, I say it, it's, it's dangerous being a man of color in the United States in 2022, but it's fun as fuck, but I, I love doing it. <laughs> but it, it takes a lot of balance and meditation and giving himself, uh, giving him time for myself and saying no. Um, right. A lot of people I know that stress themselves out, they don't know how to say no. No is my favorite word. Sometimes, <laughs> sometimes my partner will say, hey, do you want to know? Before she... <laughs> Before she even finish, I'm like, you know, this is my time to sit down, meditate. I, your time is carved out. Don't and I don't, I don't infringe on your time. Don't infringe on my time. And you know that doesn't rub everybody the right way. Sometimes telling you no, but at the end of the day, I, I can only give what I have to give, and I can't pour from an empty cup. Gotcha. That's that. That was well said. Um, mm-hmm. I'm going to take notes on that. Um, we did discuss something of that similar fashion. My, me and my wife, we did discuss something in that that fashion where it's like you have your work things. I have my work things. And when it comes to the weekend, there's certain times where I want to un, unwind altogether, where I want to take time for the podcast. I want to take time to sit there and play video games. But I also have to incorporate time for her time for family family time time with my son and yes the time for work and making money so mm-hmm. in that we do have to make a schedule for all these things to to be fluent and um for them to work together but we recognize the mental health thing we need time for ourselves to recharge mm-hmm. uh, if we're empty we can't deal with another person on that level of patience that patience mm-hmm. that we once had may be dwindling and mm-hmm. it takes something so small to set you off to cause an argument that could have been avoided if we had the proper rest, relaxation, just to get rid of whatever the world had on our shoulders the week or the day of or whatever the case may be. But those times are important and that's an example that everybody could use or utilize in their personal lives to to make their lives a little bit better. True, true. So definitely, um, yeah, me and me and um, uh, Mars, I don't know if you know, you know that, me and me and um, the brother Joey G, we plan to do like a, a Madden tournament on the podcast to create an episode of, create a whole 
genre of podcast based on that turn to Batman tournaments. We just got to think about it, put our heads together and make it happen. Because he that was originally his idea. He something that he planned in Jackson when he was living in Jacksonville. Right. And I was like, yo, I had to remind him, like, listen, remember that plan you had back in the day? Mm-hmm. Yo, let's make that happen. I mean, listen, got- I had I had a plan, I had a plan for YouTube before YouTube was popular. Mm-hmm. Story before it was life, man. Story before, of my life. Before it was before it was mainstream, I had that idea as far as everything that's coming out, the podcast, everybody putting their their information out there, people uh, marketing themselves as far as music, all of that. I seen every single piece of that. I was like one platform where you could do all of this stuff. I just need a good name and backers. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Joe, we're behind you. <laughs> yeah, Joe, we're behind you. <laughs> it just dwindled away. <laughs> but I must, I must say, guys, that 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 guy that be playing, one of the guys that be, I be watching on Facebook, that doing that uh, Madden game on um, Xbox, he be cursing, I be cracking me up. I'm like, yo, no, dude. There's a there's a gamer lifestyle that is hilarious to me. Mm-hmm. Me personally, I don't like being involved in the games, mm-hmm. playing with these people, but to hear the commentary, watching it. It's hilarious to me. <laughs> it's hilarious. Like if I'm playing the game and trying to concentrate, I can't listen to you and play the game seriously. I can't do it. I'm not that good. Like well, I'm not that concentrated where I'm like, okay, I'm in the game. Fuck what he's talking about. I'm gonna do what I gotta do. I'm not there. I'm I'm like I'm either one. I'm a spectator or I'm a player. I can't do both. <laughs> I can't do both, but to hear the commentary on the games, they're hilarious. You think that's something? Listen to the people in Call of Duty from the kids all the way up to the adults because the kids will curse out the adults and the adults will curse out the kids. And you're like, dude, that kid's 10 years old. I don't give a fuck. You should be in bed right now. Like, like what is going on right now? <laughs> oh, man. But it, it's, um, it's, it's crazy. It, it's It's Entrepreneurship is a tough business. It's a, it's a, it could be a very lonely road to go on because the supporters you, you people who, who who you expect to support you are, are not your supporters. No. They're your biggest haters. They it, they could come from the same mother and father. And they'll be hate you because you're doing something out of the box. I can exp- I can expand on this. I've mm-hmm. been hated on for a long time. And I've always been outside of the box to the point of I was a rebel against the regular structure of system. Mm-hmm. Joe, you have to go to school. Uh, yeah, but I could work. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I could do it on my own over here, and I don't have to do exactly what everybody else says. If I build up, I can do this and I can do that. I say that to say this. If you have a vision for something and you're trying to create something that's lucrative, you're mm-hmm. trying to create something that's going to generate money, you're going through all the right processes. Mm-hmm. And somebody else is watching you do all these things and you're being successful in your steps as mm-hmm. far as meeting your goals, whatever they may be on a timely fashion, and you're moving progressively up successfully. Somebody on the outside that is doing the regular nine to five watching this is secretly hating because they have to get up and they have to do this. They have to do everything in the manner that which they're doing, because if they don't, they'll fall short and they don't know how to do what you're doing. They don't know what it takes to put their feelings aside and get through these processes. Some people don't handle stress like that. Me and my wife have an argument all the time when it comes to regular job versus the entrepreneurial mind. And I think uh, the disconnect is stability is always at the forefront, Mm -hmm. should be at the forefront. Yes, I understand being an entrepreneur, but you still need a foundation to work off of, like a springboard. You can have a regular, whatever, even if it's half a day, just like a part-time job, just to make this dream that you're having float Mm -hmm. while still contributing to the household. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. But just to jump out in the deep end and expect everybody to back you, hmm, I don't know if we could do that because the pressure's on one person right now. 
Mm -hmm. That's in a relationship, whether it be a marriage or just a regular relationship. The other person's looking at you crazy like, what the hell? Mm -hmm. Now, if you're just in a household and other people are watching you, they're watching you like they're getting mad because they're doing what they're doing and they're not enjoying it. You're enjoying what you're doing. You're making your own schedule. You're taking time off. <laughs> you're saving for vacations. You're going for vacations. And they're like, how? I mm -hmm. work all this and I don't have money. Because you're not taking that time out for yourself. If you're taking time out for yourself or saving on the side, you can be able to do the same exact thing. But people don't like using other people's information. They like being the, the frontier exploration explorationists <laughs> or explorers they like to be the ones on the front line to be like i planted the flag first mm -hmm. and that's the other part of it <laughs> like this it's, it's 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 ego that gets in the way um more ego and hubris and um, kevin hart said it kevin hart i watched a podcast with kevin hart mm -hmm. and i believe he was on the podcast called the pivot with um ryan clark um, Channing Crowder and Fred Taylor. Mm -hmm. He and um, Kevin Hart said it beautifully. We could all we could all be at the top. Yes, there's no space it. for everybody on the top. It's and from the pie, out mm -hmm. there. Right. Honestly, everybody thinks it's the last slice of sweet potato mm -hmm. pie at Thanksgiving. There's unlimited pie, mm -hmm. right? Unlimited pie out there, and we can all eat together equally if we so choose. If we stop being enemies to, like you said, it's ego. Everybody wants to be first. I just want to be best. Right. Mm -hmm. I don't care if I'm first. Right. I just want to do it the best. And guess what? You're automatically going to be the best you if you're you. <laughs> it's only you. So you're automatically the best. Mm -hmm. It's just growing a percent every day. You you get a 1% better at the end of the year. You're 365% better than you were the year before. Right. Mm -hmm. But people don't look at, people don't look at, People don't look at it in that fashion because they want the they want the whole number. They mm -hmm. want the whole number. They don't want the half number. You don't want to take the percentage. You want the whole thing at one time. You want the hundred percent. It don't work like that. It Not doesn't. all the time. Not you can't time. jump. You can't jump from a zero platform <laughs> all the way to a hundred. You can't do it. Mm -hmm. There's some people. There's some people that get lucky because they're at the right place at the right time. They know the right person at the right time and that does happen but those situations are rare and far between mm -hmm. there are other people that generally gen generation wise they can do that mm -hmm. because they have the connections their parents had the connections they know the right people to talk to there's that but there's other people that do get lucky from this point they jump all the way to 100 is because they talk to the right person mm -hmm. in the right situation and they were like fuck it let's do it the, and plus they had the esteem to sit at every table another thing too people with big egos most of the time have low self esteem to cover to mask it yes to mask it I'm 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 of I'm of the believer. Me myself is I, I can sit at any table I want to, because mm -hmm. the reason why I can sit at any table I want to is because I can create my own table too, yeah. and I believe that. But I sit at other tables to learn and educate myself, and right. sit by somebody who did who do, who's doing the same thing I'm doing, but a little bit a little bit longer, who's making that that money go long, right? And That's, it makes it makes sense to do that. Mm-hmm. I want to do a podcast, so I'm gonna I'm gonna I put everything together. I put the logo together. I got the music together. I got the people on the show. Now I think that I'm gonna be better than everybody else because I got it down to that point, and that point solidifies the fact that I know everything about podcasts. No, mm -hmm. sir, you haven't done the work. Mm -hmm. You haven't done the work. You haven't done the research. I call people. I call people out all the time. I call you know fans out too. I see my fans on other people's podcasts, but it, when I, the minute I call them to be in my podcast, we'll see. Mm -hmm. But you know, I'll, I'll be the first one to jump on their podcast. If they ask me to jump on their podcast, I'll be the first one there because you know why? I'm comfortable in my skin. Yeah, 
I, I tell I'll... people, if you, if you are nice enough to extend an invite to me, unless mm -hmm. if it's something I can do, I'm mm -hmm. going to do it. I don't care what level you are because that might be the episode that somebody sees you on their platform right. that you've never seen your platform and now they're a lifelong fan of you. Mm -hmm. Or just get interested enough just to want to see you again. Let me see, see what he's going to say again. See you again. <laughs> Every opportunity is an opportunity that you don't know whose eyes. So especially when you see, I, I've seen people that, you know, especially with, with me, I, I'm mostly handle artists and I, I'm not going to call any artists out there. Mm -hmm. Uh, by name, but I, I have interviewed. I understand your pain. Yeah, I have interviewed some artists that are streaming millions and are, are literally the future of this industry. That if you go back on some episodes, you'll see in a year from now, you're like, damn, Mars was ahead of the curve. This guy and built relationships with these right. artists that I know are gonna blow. And then I've had other artists that I, I'm going on and I'm looking, and I know how much. A million streams gets you seventy five hundred dollars. That's not a lot of artists streaming a million of their songs. So when I'm seeing people who are in the streams in the mid three hundreds, mm -hmm. and they're sending me their writer to be on the show, mm -hmm. and I'm like, bro, like humble yourself. As as, as, as uh, my man said, know your value. You should always know your value, yes. but also humble yourself. Because right. I'm looking at your streams and I'm looking at my streams, and this is a this is an opportunity for you, right. not to be. There's there's a rapper, like I said, I ain't gonna say him, but they were popular in the '99 and the 2000. That's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> and wanted five bands to be on the show, and I said, oh, we don't pay for interviews. That, that that's my uh, you know that's my <laughs> integrity for my. You know, I don't. I, I don't know where I've heard that before. It sounds familiar. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I said five bands to do what? Are you going to executive produce my show? Or are you going to, you know, write? What, what, what am I giving you five for a 20-minute interview with this person that no one is interviewing? Listen, right. if for that price, you're going to have to work out something else because I want to be happy. Happy ending. I want a happy ending. Fuck that. Going to be fun, man. <laughs> have to come back. This is not a what time. <laughs> um, what was I going to say? Uh, speaking of that, being at the right place at the right time and having people in your 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 presence and not knowing where they would be years from now. Kodak Black walked into the studio that I was in in Jacksonville. Kid at the time, I mean, like any other kid you look at as an as an older child in our generation that we grow up, oh, this knucklehead. Kodak Black walked in. I've also seen Little Duval in front of my eyes. Shook hands, everything. How you doing? No, no, no. Interested in the business. But where we were at at the time, the business didn't take off in the professional manner and keep the connections that they had or keep in touch. So everything faded. It, I wouldn't say faded, but they went their separate ways. Mm -hmm. On to success, this one just dwindled away. Why? Because people will be people. And they missed the opportunity. It fell flat. The other people succeeded. Mm -hmm. We talk about this now. Like, I just had a conversation not too long ago. Where we were talking on the phone. Yo, we had a big thing. Yeah, it was a big thing at the time. And I had the vision at the time to see it. But nobody was on board at that time. People's maturity is at different levels. Mm -hmm. Some people's awareness is not what other people's awareness is at the time another takeaway from the show that we were just talking about mm -hmm. understand the situation for what it is they're not thinking in the manner that you're thinking you can't impose that thinking on that other person how i feel about the situation is totally different from what they're they're thinking in the situation so let me understand where they're coming from that was my position especially being the host the position is what what were they thinking? Why were they thinking like that? How would I feel if I was in their, their shoes? What would force me to feel this way? Mm -hmm. Okay. 
and getting all the facts and the and the, if okay, I kind of I kind of see where everything is going. Shut it down. Shut it down. Shut it down. But understand where that where you failed in that. Me personally, where you failed in that, and we can move on forward and look for those key things so we can stop it before anything like that happens again. Or before the podcast, using Brian Bathia as a as an example in that, have rules mm -hmm. how you want things to be dictated in the situation. So moving forward, these things don't happen again. Let me let me interject to you on let me interject to you, bro. We're gonna we're gonna go back to that situation. Um, and you saw how my reaction on, on that podcast, me being a podcast host, you you were doing your you're being the host. I was doing my best to, to protect you because when you try to set the rules during the during the recording, mm -hmm. well, the other person was not respecting that. And I felt as a fellow podcast host and mm -hmm. your and your best friend, your brother, I had to step up and let you listen. When the host tell you to stop, you must stop. Right. Because we get see in, in I'm not going to say in the defense of the person, but in the understanding of the person, that's Joe. That's the regular Joe that everybody knows. This is not the brand. They're not talking to the brand right now. Mm -hmm. Joe understands where I'm coming from because Joe. But that's the see, this is where we, we're talking about brand, correct? We're talking about brands. Mm -hmm. We're talking about brand. They mistake brand the brand name for the person. And the person for the brand name, they 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 intertwine them together. They're not the same people. And in telling the person after the fact, like, yo, that's for the show. Mm -hmm. Trust me when I tell you it's for the show. I do it purposely for the show. The attitude, the vibrato, everything that I put on the table is for the show. Outside of the show, I will address your feelings as a person. Mm -hmm on a personal level, because I know you personally, I'm going to find out how you were affected by the show and apologize for making you feel in a certain manner. As a person, as a friend, as somebody who we grew up with, yes, I'm going to approach you in that manner. If you can't respect that, that's not on me. Mm -hmm. Don't put it on me. If you're not willing to receive that, then I don't know what to tell you. Because there's two parts of me right now that you were influenced by or you were subjected to. Better word? Probably. You were subjected to the other part of me that was a radio, uh, the podcast personality. Mm -hmm. They're synonymous with one another. Uh, to understand that one is for the entertainment purpose and the one outside of that is a personal confidant. Mm hmm but you have to know the difference or understand that after the show, you can still approach me and we could still talk about these things. It's not the final thing. Oh, I don't like the way the, they, they, they made me feel. I didn't like the way they, they thought of me. Mm -hmm. They thought of you that way. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we're, we're being selfish in this situation. Mm -hmm. We're being selfish in this situation. That's what you're telling me. They thought about you in that situation. They didn't. They didn't look at me. Me being the host of the show, they didn't look at me at all. Okay. Fair. I guess. In your eyes, that would be fair. I guess. But to to rewind, to rewind, we're talking about branding and everything mm -hmm. like that. It's it's a way to keep me grounded. Mm -hmm. To know that my personal life and my brand is totally different things. This is where mm -hmm. people get caught up and get lost in this whole fucking matrix of entertainment. They do. They get lost mm -hmm. in the fucking entertainment ma matrix. Mm -hmm. Like this is the all. No, it's not. Understand that you're two different entities. Yes, solidified as one person. But turn it on and off. Mm -hmm. Turn it on and off. You're still approachable. Mm -hmm. You're still a regular person. You're mm -hmm. not invincible. You're not Superman. Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> You're not. I, I feel like being strong in this world, like putting on that, that armor, we, we tend to put up armor to protect ourselves from 
things that may stress us, thing, people that may hurt us and things of this nature and forget you're not the only one that goes through it. There's, you have allies out here. We've been through it too. Maybe not the mm. same circumstances, but we don't like bullies either. We don't like being in a relationships that are not healthy. We don't mm. like that. We don't like being in jobs that make it seem like this is the end. Like, this is it. This is all I got in my life. We don't like being in those situations. But you have to recognize these things. You have to, re you as a person, you have to recognize it. But self, you have to take inventory. You were saying it earlier. Inventory. You take inventory of yourself. If you're not taking inventory of yourself, how are you going to expect to progress? What did I do wrong in this situation? Do you ever ask that question of yourself? You can have an argument and you may be valid in your point, whatever the case may be. But at the end of the day, did you in that argument after the argument, did you say, but what did I do wrong in that situation? What could I have done better? Did you ask yourself those questions mm. or am I the only thing that was going through your mind? My situation. I was right because I felt those situations that sounds more narcissistic than anything else and this is why i try to push away from this is this is the evolution of joey g mm -hmm. the evolution of joey g went from i to we mm -hmm. and understanding that me comes last mm -hmm. me comes last comes last oh you want to do a podcast okay i'll be in the back I'll be in the back. I'll be putting up. You want me to stream it? I'll stream it for you. I'll help you do that. Behind the scenes, I don't have to be present. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so every time you're on camera, I'll be like, yeah, I am. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not for that. I was never for that. When I started this whole venture, I didn't want to be in front of the camera. I didn't want to talk to people because <laughs> that's my natural personality. Yeah, I'll, be in, I'll be at the bar. <laughs> you want to know where I am? I'll be at the bar. I'll be drinking. I, Ask I, anybody that knows me. I think I, the bar. <laughs> I think I. I think I think I brought this out of him, man. He's always a man in the in the back scene. Yeah, I always said bar. that. <laughs> I always said. I always said that George, you gonna be my engineer in the podcast, man, because he knows everything about computers and stuff like that and get it together. But this man stepped stepped up. It's like, yo, Dom is doing it. So I'm like, I gotta do it. And Listen, I, I brother, won. My, my brother was doing it. For about a year, I was like, Joe, you know, you could have been doing the same thing because you showed him certain things to do the podcast. Now he's doing the podcast and you're sitting there saying, <laughs> why didn't you do the podcast? <laughs> and I, I'm not going to lie to you guys. I was afraid to go live. I was afraid to go live. Man. I didn't want my face to be on the podcast, things like that. You're putting my... yourself out there. But my good friend who I, work, I, who I used to work with in the hospital, the doctor, and hopefully... She's gonna be in my other podcast on the Women's Entrepreneur series. She's a mother, an ER doctor, a business owner, fashion mogul, all that and one. Right. I hope to have an interview on the podcast. Can't wait to have on the podcast soon once I get those that series started. But think about it for a second. If someone could do all of that and be a mother at the same time. Mm -hmm. It takes a lot of work. It mm -hmm. takes a lot of bumps in the road. When you deal with the bumps in the road, what do you take it as? You take it as a bump in the road so you can quit, or you go take use that as a springboard or a learning, learning experience to mm -hmm. elevate yourself. Right. This is what entrepreneurship is all about. Yes, you're taking a taking a risk. Yes, I took a risk. Joey G took a risk. Boss took a risk to get away from the. Get away from someone who's who calls yourself call themselves your boss, who you know they're beneath you in their mental. Right. I'll tell you straight out, with me, people are not gonna like me, but I'm gonna tell the truth. If you don't think with logic, if you don't really think with common sense, you were already beneath me a long time ago. Right. Because that those are the rules I live by: logic and common sense. Right. If it's not logical, you're gonna piss me off. Right. If it's not with common sense, you're gonna piss me off. 
Mm -hmm. and you may get you may get asshole down, right? Not nice down, because that's just, that's from that's from being raised by by a father who didn't tolerate stupidity, he didn't tolerate lack of logic, he didn't tolerate lack of common sense. That's the way I was raised. True. So I took that as my makeup too, because if a lot of people would exercise a form of logic and common sense, mm -hmm. life would be so much easier. Right. We wouldn't be as a planet even in this situation that, that you know that we're in. We're you know just logic and common sense. We, you know, we talk about that should be a course. <laughs> that should be a course in in, in high school. Sit here and, and my mother. She God God bless her. I love you, mom. But every time I go to their house, she's got politics. I bought her a couple years ago, like this big eighty eight inch screen because they had the old TV and I was like, bro, y'all are killing me. <laughs> 88 inch widescreen super 4K. It still TV. works. <laughs> it still to turn on. She's like, can you turn this on for me? I'm like, just leave the shit on. But <laughs> always looking at politics all mm -hmm. day long. And I go over there and she's like, you hear what Al Sharpton said? I said, no, I didn't hear. I didn't hear because I don't care because they're all bullshit on both sides. Right. Both sides. They're, the whole goal is to keep the status quo. They're two right. sides of the same coin. When you're talking about revolution, call me. But if you're talking about the same shit, I'm not interested. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, it's back to, they're all the same. They just pander to different sides to keep the status quo. And, right. and, and she it consumes that. And I told her, Mom, don't consume that. If you want to know about politics, look at my politics as usual special available on YouTube. Right now, but perfect. That's, that's, <laughs> perfect segue. That's, they, don't CNN. they don't know nothing. They don't know nothing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, I I agree with you on that. My my take. See, I I followed conspiracy theories. I followed politics for a minute, and there's certain wormholes you shouldn't just go down, like. My goal wasn't to be a politician, but watching politics makes you want to go into politics and politicking makes you understand how conversations happen and how deals are done to the point where you look at it and you go, aha, I see why this person is dealing with that person, that person dealing with this person. This bill wasn't passed and this this bill was vetoed because one person scratches another person's back. That person scratches that person's back. Okay, we'll put that into perspective. Now, mm -hmm. if they're not scratching each other's back, it's like, hey, you remember when you did such and such and and blase blah at this time and um, you were here at this time? Well, I got the paperwork right here. Can you do oh. me a favor so I can make this paperwork disappear? Oh, you remember you remember the time when your a, your a hole is getting blown the f out by another man? <laughs> <laughs> I always say, why the Graham go Listen, from the what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas right. <laughs> this, this video says it was in Omaha, Nebraska what's that got to do with it? it's close enough <laughs> people say, love Vegas <laughs> yeah. why Graham, he went from I hate Donald Trump to Donald Trump's the best man because those in the know those people that know in DC they call my man Lady Graham out there, you know, so mm, you get mm. that dirt. If you can't be corrupted, then we'll find what you've already been corrupted, and 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 it's a dirty game. I'm like, why do we still have gas yes. when we can all? They could have passed a bill to make manufacturers make electric cars 20, 30 years ago. Technology. We're there. Today. We're there. Technology. We're we're yeah. at the we're at the precipice. We're at the precipice where we know we can have electric. We as can see. Matter, it. As a matter of fact, guys. It. Thanks for guys for bringing that up because I did do an episode from my trip to the New York New York Auto Show about electric cars. I gotta I gotta put that I gotta put the episode in in the rotation. Please Thank you put guys. that in the put Thank it in guys. the rotation. And I'll add to that. I'll add to that, and we'll talk about politics as far as the electric car is concerned <laughs> <laughs> on Mars's show. Yeah. Let me tell you something. Politics as usual, special on that. Let's make right. it happen. <laughs> No, but what I was trying to say is we know where that's going as as far as that. Let's reel it back in because we are talking about branding. Mm -hmm. 
We are entrepreneurship. 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 And, and entrepreneurship. We're talking about branding and entrepreneurship. Let's re- let's reel it back. This is what we do at True Players <laughs> Podcast. We 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 in the midst of an episode, we may create another episode or two, three episodes within the podcast. That's that we the, conver- about. the conversation is so great. Just <laughs> <laughs> just just uh it, yeah, immaculate. You want to shut this. Chabella. <laughs> so my question to you, the uh, uh, Mars, you said something that was beautiful earlier in the podcast about you gotta love what you do. You got to. Yeah. You, it, I've wasted I've wasted so many years. If I think about it, I'll jump off a cliff because mm-hmm. you you want to do the right things, and sometimes the people that'll kill your dreams are the people that's closest to you because oh, they don't gosh. have the vision to see life any other way. I knew at 17, before I was 17, what I wanted to do. I told my mom, I do not want to go to college. Mm -hmm. I know grandpa put a little bread aside for me in this bond. Yeah, I looked at the paperwork. I know what's up. I want to go ahead and cash this bond. I want to go out to California, and I want to try my hand at writing because Mm -hmm. that was my passion. I wanted to write shows, sitcoms, whatever you may be. That's what I want to do. And my mom said, you're not that funny. You need to go to college. You need something to back up on. And I'm like, so why am I, if I would have thought of, why am I making my reality or my primary, my backup plan? Because that's what they tell you. Right. Go to school so you can have something to fall back on. But I'm making mm. my fall back on my primary plan. Right. That becomes your primary goal after. It's, it's right. the biggest screw in the game. And you don't even realize it because that's what they were told. My mom right. didn't have an opportunity to go to college. She was born in the 50s. So mm-hmm. she's seeing her black sons get a college degree. That was her dream. And her dream was accomplished. But in turn, what did it do to her children's dream? And I think that's something that parents, mm-hmm. we can't put our dream on mm-hmm. our kids because we may in turn kill their dream. Luckily, later in life, I was able to realize that, hey, a dream deferred is not a dream denied. So yes, mm-hmm. I may have wasted well, what I deem wasted 20 years in corporate America, but I learned tools and the timing is right now because I didn't have an ABC studio when I was in 1998, when I was 18 years old, right. mm-hmm. but I got a YouTube studio now. Yeah. I, I, you know, I, I got, I got programming now and I can do everything myself and I can distribute myself and I can be authentic myself and I can have most importantly ownership myself. Mm-hmm. Um, those are those are things that are lessons I wouldn't have learned if I didn't go to school, if I didn't do corporate America, if I would have just stepped out, I probably would have signed my likeness away to something on MTV 25 years ago and have just been ass out right now. But ultimately, when it comes to if you have a family member that that is or loved one that wants to be an entrepreneur, they want to focus on their brand and the biggest thing you can support them is if you don't have anything positive to say, don't say anything at all. Don't Because don't enforce your limitations on someone because we are all not the same. And if you feel they can't do it, they'll learn. Because guess what? You they, There's 50-year-old men in college all day. Yeah. Every day. Yeah. You, can, yeah. you can fall back on after, after failing your dream, but don't make your fallback plan your first plan. Make that shit plan B or C or D. Or one of my favorite oppositions, choose not to fail. Because you yeah. have that option yeah. and you can define success. Success may not be um, getting that $100 million Joe Rogan deal. But su- success may be able to say, all I do for a living is a podcast. And I'm paying all my bills with a podcast. That's success. Hell yeah. <laughs> that's, that's success. Right on. Let me get a hell yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. So you can choose not to fail. And, and that's one thing, you know, redefine your level of success and right. then make sure you accomplish that. And it can be done. I, I cool. agree with that. I agree yes. with that. 100%. I, I agree with that 100% myself. 100% myself. And uh, what what can I say? I'm going to say something, too. If people, we're going to go back to the ego thing, especially with family members or friends, you know. I've had family members on my podcast. Let's not get it twisted. I, prophecy is my cousin. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Um, cool peoples, cool very, peoples. very, uh, very talented, very talented. Um, 
uh, very he he's good at networking. Um, I'm trying to I'm trying to give bullet points for people that don't know him like that. I know we're we're <laughs> modest we're modest as far as family members are concerned, but from what I've seen and what I've heard, um, you're doing your thing. You're mm-hmm. involved in in programs um, that contribute to the community. Uh, your mind as far as creativity is fucking excellent mm-hmm. it's excellent now we just have to find a way for you to flourish with these things yeah he was supposed to join us tonight but something came up so he's not joining us tonight um, as of course he he's so talented he did he did my original theme song to we gonna make it beat to the point that YouTube is done put copyright infringement on that theme song. That's why I had to change it. <laughs> right. So which I really love that theme song because it was the podcast, everything yeah. about the podcast, all in one thing. It's just a beat. We couldn't use it. <laughs> yeah. I, I had to do my own beat when I when I uh when I created down in the den theme song. I, I had a similar idea and I was like YouTube is gonna get in my ass on this <laughs> So I did my own, I composed my own beat and it wrapped over it everything. Now I have like artists like, hey, we, we want to do the theme song for next reason. I'm like, but everybody loves my classic four bar rap. Uh, <laughs> I, had to, I had to bring out the MC bat for a little bit. I was like, eh, you know, that's all. <laughs> that's Listen, all. This, it, was a, it, it was a double meaning. If anybody knows the original theme song of the True Players podcast, it had a double meaning. Mm-hmm. It was a double meaning. Yes, we were talking about the theme of the podcast, but at the same time, we going to make it. We going to make, make it. it. We going to make it. Come on. <laughs> I was like, and, they're hating too hard right now. And the thing, is, <laughs> the thing is, Mars, that you know, people don't know, not even YouTube knows this. My cousin prophecy knows Jada Kiss, and Jada Kiss gave the okay verbally to use the beat. And you, still got it. you, you <laughs> put it put it in black and white. Strike <laughs> me on my own song one time. <laughs> oh my god! I said, this is my song, written, composed. Look, what a It's me. That's my face. Oh, I think man. I think they did that to me too. Talking about because uh, I had Dom on my show. Because mm-hmm. <laughs> I had Dom on my show and I made reference to True Players podcast. It's like, no copyright infringement. I say, bitch, we're both on shows together. <laughs> <laughs> I am him. He is I. Right. <laughs> the same entity. We're working oh, yeah. together. Facebook will get you too. Facebook. Right. Hey, you know, Facebook, Facebook is the ultimate snitch. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the old no, check, out. Check, out. check out, check out, guys. I did the reface with um with Star Lord doing the dance. It, it's a dance off, bro. Now, right. now Facebook's like, we gotta we gotta partially mute that song, mute that view. I'm like, it's a reface, god damn it. I'm mute. my face is on the damn thing, right? It's and that's me. creative, that's creative. Yeah, it was somebody else's, but it was creatively done where you could say it's yours. <laughs> Under parody, people understand that parody laws protect you <sighs> as long as that's the will. Weird Al technically did not have to ask permission, he did <laughs> it out of respect, but par- he should he, sh- he should have for Gangsta's Paradise. I'm, not, I'm just gonna put that out there. <laughs> was pretty mad, I think, that, yeah, I Coolio think. was mad, <laughs> <laughs> like people died in the streets, right? People people died in the streets. You talking Good. about. Something. Weird I was just like, yo, I was just making a joke. My bad. <laughs> he wanted to he wanted to see big he wanted to right. see. I'm like, hey, Stevie Wonder ain't roll up on you for stealing his whole beat. Listen, mm-hmm. he did he did a thing on Michael Jackson too. Michael didn't come for him. <laughs> and believe me, Michael would have came for him. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Michael came for M. Mm-hmm. Michael yo, my- came for M. You oh, you're gonna put my name on your head, my song. You're gonna put a name, my name in your song. Okay, I'm just gonna buy your catalog. Nobody's gonna get that. <laughs> Michael was ruthless for the business. They said when right. he got Paul McCartney, <laughs> Paul was like, I, <laughs> he was like, I gave you the idea. At least sell it back to me. He was like, No, Paul. <laughs> you can go sing my song. Catalog is mine. Mine, mine. <laughs> 
<laughs> yes, it's mine. Mine, mine. I know oh. you, John, wrote those songs, but it's like a waste of time. <laughs> Cause I bought this shit from under you, and now the Beatles songs are mine. The song, mine, <laughs> mine, <laughs> mine, <laughs> mine, <laughs> mine, mine. <laughs> I said, "Doggone songs are mine." <laughs> but they came out and did a uh, come together better than the damn Beatles. That was, I was like, you petty, man. <laughs> Mike, that's why I love you. Shout out to MJ. Rest in peace. Listen, they can say as soft spoken as he was, <laughs> king of petty. Let me let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Michael Jackson and Prince. Oh, their beef two, was two. Beef. Ooh, there were even though Prince wore heels and he was on that shit on, on stage, and Michael Listen. Jackson was with the high pitched voice. Two of them brothers were straight gangsters. Oh yeah. In the, <laughs> in the industry, in the industry, Prince alone, gangster in the industry. Michael, for another reason, all alone. I think he grew into that. Like, oh, I'm tired of this shit. <laughs> I think Prince evolved during the time and was just like, yo, I want this. This is gonna happen. How can I get it? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a, writing the beat. I'm using my own studio time. I'm writing the lyrics. All y'all doing is distributing. How do you own the masters of right. something that I created in my living room? That don't sound right. I don't right. even like <laughs> Listen, <laughs> every <laughs> instrument in here I own. I play what? every single one of these motherfuckers. <laughs> I didn't ask for anybody's help. That's <laughs> what you a fully delivered mitts and master project. Right. All you gotta do is take a damn photo and pay for the music. <laughs> That's all you got to do. Put, Nigga, put, you just have to be present at this time and stand behind me. I got you. I got you. <laughs> remember, be on time because I will find you if you're not on time. <laughs> and, and remember, it's mine, mine. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what that's the thing is that that's the beauty of entrepreneurship is to be able to own your masters and any crap that no. you're in. If, the ability, if we learn anything from Prince. That should be like if there was a if there was something that we're gonna put on this tombstone, make sure you own your, your masters. masters. That's it. Mm -hmm. If you should be known for anything, it should be that because everybody that I've heard talk about Prince in their stories, the one question at he asked them in in meeting it in meeting them, they all said the same thing. Do you own your masters? He do it in his, in his little pitch voice. Do you own your masters? Yeah. <laughs> okay. right. you Al your Alicia heart. Keys. <laughs> Alicia Keys as hot as she was. Or mm -hmm. is, excuse me, is, because she's still up there. Oh, yeah. As hot as she is as far as the music and, and entertainment was, he asked her the same question. She was like, no. He's like, I can't, I can't mess with you. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I'm not paying for another man's child to eat off of your work. Right. Those days. And that was, that's respect. The way mm -hmm. he introduced it to her was just straight respect. Yeah. I'm not going to let somebody else eat off your plate. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Period. Now, if you if you get invited to the table, I'm all for strategic partnership. Right. Um, and, you know, we offer those services uh, in, with the den mate. You know, if you got an artist and somebody's got you a deal, send me the record label. We offer the, we'll send me the contract. I'll read over it and tell you how you're getting bent over. And, and, mm -hmm. and what to remove? But closed mouth can't get fed. They're, they know that those these contracts are are modern day slavery. So mm -hmm. by you asking for something, nine times you're gonna get it because if they're really willing to offer you this much, trust me, you're worth that much more. Right. So nine times especially, out of ten, yeah. yeah. In the music industry, record sales it, it's such a con. As I mentioned, a million strings gets you seventy five hundred dollars. That's if you own 100% of your masters, you get all the points. Yeah. But if you got a label and a manager and another manager under that and an attorney, that's $7,500 has been split so many ways. If you end up TLC pulling up to the Grammys in a RAV4, you don't want that for your life. Right. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> Shout out to the Rav Four, though I actually own a Rav Four. Listen, Rav Four, no, Rav, Rav listen. Four coming hybrid, right? So I'm definitely yeah. down. Listen, you know, don't go chasing waterfalls. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> Listen, the two the two groups that got butt fucked in many ways. One was New Edition. Yeah. Two was TLC. Right. And TLC was was more our generation as far as how young they were. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which Just is imagine crazy because they were doing that in Motown and all these other record labels, yeah. and they're still we still hear Meek Mill. We still hear 504 Foreign or whatever his name just said something about a deal with Mace. We're still hearing this. How? How? In 2022, how are you people still signing these deals where you're just getting it? It's, it's if you're hot enough to get the communi- a community behind you, you don't need it. Look at um, right. That it, I think it's the freedom of that though. That's that's what artists are talking about the freedom versus the label. Right. Being an independent artist versus the label going in the industry, the industry door, you go in the industry door or you can go freelance and do whatever you want. But you have to still put in the work. Mm -hmm. Being independent means you have to put in the work. You have to put in the social media time. You have to put in the uh, social work. You have to put yourself out there for people to recognize you and get those numbers up as far as the fans. Mm -hmm. So everything that we see on Twitter is as far as the numbers. Those numbers people are looking at and be like, yo, he generates this much people. We can make money off of that. How can we make money off of that? What do we need to do to get him on the table so we can get that money? That's potential money right there. A million fans? He got a million fans. What is he doing? Why is he doing it? And how can we get him on the table for this deal? Yeah. And, And if you're generating that much on your own, do you really need a label? Do you really need, or do this, you need a better marketing strategy? This is this is how people jump from uh, um, Instagram models and things like that to the screen, and you're sitting to the big screen, and you're like, "How? Mm. Mm. You skipped every process that every actor and every other person every went through the proper channels. You skipped the line and went past that. How are you on the screen right now?" If I was a if I was a model, if I was an actor or actress, I would be fucking pissed. Like, yo, you didn't do everything that I did. How are you on screen right now? <laughs> but you have the numbers to back you. Facts. It's the evolution. It's and it's an it is an evolution. It has to evolution. be respected as far as that. Yeah. Because it's a new way of uh, social marketing. It's a new way of marketing, but it also in it's encompass in your brand Mm -hmm. it evolves around your brand what you present to the people that people back and people are are behind and and they're looking at it because you're down to earth Mm -hmm. your virtual relationships how often you sit there and communicate with with everybody your reliability um and your videos your audience and you're connecting with what they want to see. That's that's my take on what I've seen, what I've heard other people talk about, and my my view as far as what is branding. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's encompassed cool. in it, and I'm pretty sure there's more. There's conversations because oh. mm-hmm. you got to build relationships and everything like that, as far as interactions and everything like that. You definitely have to represent yourself mm-hmm. constantly, but that's being consistent. We go back to that consistency. Mm-hmm. You're building your following. You're constantly there. You're giving them, giving your audience what they want to hear or what they're looking for when they come see you. Mm. If Even if it's just yourself, you just being you, because they like you because you're being you. I, I'll give you an example. Paul, what's his name? Paul, um... The dude that wanted to fight Mayweather. Uh, uh, Jake Paul? Paul, Jake Paul. Jake Paul. One of the balls. Jake Paul. One of the balls. Right. He's doing exactly what people want him to do. Mm-hmm. Oh, you want to fight everybody? Oh, we're going to back you on that situation because we want to see where it goes. It doesn't matter that you've never had a professional career in your life, but you talk so much shit. Let's see how much you can back it up. Oh, you want something? Okay, cool. That's great. Let's see if you can continue doing that. Oh, guys, by the way, sorry to interject, though. You're good. Which, which, which Paul was in SummerSlam, Logan or the other one? Logan. Logan. 
Logan, okay. Jake's the one I, that actually I, I can box. Mean. Logan's the one that just loses all the matches. Mm. Not good. <laughs> I just started throwing it there. No, I seen it earlier. I was going to say something about it, but I wasn't sure, so I wasn't going to tie it. <laughs> Listen, but you know, you know, you know what? We to, to, to continue from my last show together, guys. Um, I see Triple H is bringing back some wrestlers that were fired. Imagine yeah, man. That. We, we predicted it. <laughs> it's, a, it's a new, it's a new age. I, I didn't um, uh, watch Raw tonight. I'll watch the replay. Mm-hmm. But, um, you know, I, I did watch SummerSlam and we saw some returning faces. The show had a, just a better energy, the commentary. You, you can tell when Vince, you know, for, for all the good things, man was 77. He, yeah. he, he may have been a little senile. He may have been because just the energy of the show was just that much better when someone actually loves what they're doing versus just someone whose ego says, I know what's best. And I think that collaborative spirit that Triple H brings, brings a lot of energy. So I, I, I predict the golden age for, for WWE. Evolution. <laughs> no pun intended. No pun intended. No, no pun intended. No pun intended. All right, guys, this has been a great podcast with the both of you. Again, we will do this again. Keep in mind, we still got the what if Game of Thrones episode. I can't wait to have that episode for you guys. Um, I believe um, House of Dragons come out August 14th or August 13th? Um, I think it's the 13th, but don't quote me on that. All right, bet. So what we're going to do is we, we talk online, offline about that. But, stick uh, around. <laughs> Please stick around because we got more conversation after <laughs> the camera stop. Stick around. <laughs> so, so we can brainstorm for the next one. <laughs> so it's a it's a beautiful thing. But um it's blessed to, to share the fourth year anniversary with, with, with Mars and Joey G, of course. Uh, we we hope that we had prophecy here with us. We hope we had uh, Ajman, my cousin Ajman Yankura, you know. Um we hope to have live here too, but you know, other other situations happen, other commitments happen. Maybe um, Instagram, I don't know. Fam, family, listen, I I don't mind doing a, a after show Instagram live though, um, but um, that that was fun doing those after after episode um, lives though. But we guys, we gonna wrap it up. Okay. Um, it's been like I said, blessed to have everybody here. This is four years. June twenty seventh, two thousand eighteen was the first awful whim. The first episode is awful whim. Um, I want to thank um, uh, Fairy Child. You know, I'm not gonna put her government on on the podcast. She was the reason why I got this podcast started. Then I met up with my sister's friend from high school, Miss Dillis Victoria. She gave me the first the first promotion of the True Players podcast that made me elevate. To more of a more mainstream situation, to the point that I was in the front, I was in the front of the table with Sirius Radio, mm-hmm. in front of them, mm-hmm. talking about we want to give you give you your own channel. Think about that for a second, there. No, granted, I had I was focused on other things which I should not have been focused on, because the because my my podcast, True Place Podcast, is the love that comes from me. To the people, and all I bring all my friends with me. All my friends with me. I'm a type of dude that I bring everybody with me. I don't leave nobody behind. If we can win, we gonna win together. I don't want to. I don't want to win by myself. It's lonely. Let's win together. Let's make money together. Because that's the best way to put out new leaves and stuff, new new branches and new trees by doing that together. We gotta stop with this selfish ego nonsense bullshit. We really do ego to the side. There's money to be made in these streets if we come together. Mm-hmm. That's what the man wants us to do. It's to divide and conquer. Mm. You know what I'm saying? That's why 70% of the population, American population, is living paycheck to paycheck. Mm. Why are you sitting there being at 54% in debt? Mm. Is that fair? Four out of ten houses don't have a don't have a life life insurance plan. What are you doing? Right, you got them J's though. <laughs> you got them J's. Got them J's. Yeah. Though. <laughs> it's crazy. It's crazy, fellas. So, final words with Mars. Yo, man, uh, four years has been beautiful, man. It's been a pleasure getting to know you the last couple of years, and 
being yeah. featured here and you guys being featured. So thank you. Uh, uh, four more and four more and four more after that and four squared and all that. And four <laughs> yeah. four, all the math. Uh, thank you again uh, for having me, guys. Uh, if you're interested in my thoughts and what we're doing, check us out down in the den presents the den Mars entertainment is the channel. Check me on Instagram, shoot me a DM. I'm, I'm open, not that type of DM, but you know, <laughs> if, if, if you're interested in a, in a product or, or the show, hit me up and uh, Joey, Dom, thank you guys. That's it. Uh, Croc Yang, get the Crocs out there. We got the uh, <laughs> uh, merch for the Crocs coming out soon. And shout out to the folks at Good Company providing the merch. You know, just giving shots out to mother other black businesses. So peace and love. Peace and love. Hey, Joey G, what's up, man? Give the final thoughts of Joey G. Barry Convo family. Mr. Mr. Bud, Bud over there. Listen, I'm I'm sipping on this beer and I'm reflecting. That thing looked real refreshing, man. I was looking at this water depressed. So I was like, man. <laughs> I'm sitting there like, <laughs> listen, hey, you're sitting over there, pH balanced. You're good right now. <laughs> it's essential. <laughs> um, no, 13 years behind the scenes, bro. I've been 13 years behind the scenes since 2009. Um, it's a pleasure to sit there and watch Dom four years in. I go from talking on a podcast audio to watch them go live for the first time till now. Um, listening to sports commentary as far as what he sees is in in sports for the Knicks, the Nets. Um, oh, excuse me, the Knicks and the Mets. The Knicks, Knicks and the Mets. Knicks, yeah. Mets, Jets. Right. Of course, we're going to have the, Kyle back for the football season. You know what I'm saying? So we, we, we're doing it big. My bad, Joe. Go, no, you're good. See, see, he wanted to go right in. <laughs> but that was <laughs> that was the original intent of the uh, True Players podcast to talk about sports um, and segue into regular life stuff. When we're talking about relationships, talking about politics, we're talking about current event life issues. Um, there was a lot of good conversations when we were talking about uh, Trayvon Martin, um, George Floyd, uh, just, I, I hate to say Black Lives Matter movement, but during that time of all the things that were happening during the, the police brutality stuff and the events that were put out there, we had a lot of common conversations on the matter where we were talking about our points of views as far as being regular citizens or talking from the point of view of being an officer looking at these situations how do we sit there and 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 encompass everything that is going on how do we change those situations like people i don't know if people understand where the true player podcast came from and the direction it was going but that was a pivotal point and these were pivotal conversations that needed to be addressed um, and put out there. This is what made me want to do my own podcast. Not only did I want to event like those situations and talk about the current events and show your frustration and anger, but I wanted to try to get a resolution in some form or fashion, maybe a different point of view. Hey, if you need to relax and fucking drink and talk about it, then let's drink and talk about it. But we need to have these conversations. If you feel more comfortable drinking and talking about it, that's what you do on my show, Beer Combo and Family. Because we're still family mm -hmm. on the True Players podcast. We're that's still true. family. We're still talking in the same fashion. I'm still drinking. If mm -hmm. anybody else wants to drink, that's on them. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But it's encompassed to one another. I want you to feel fluent when you come to the True Players podcast and understand what kind of conversations you're going to have, understand the depth in which we're willing to go. And after four years, you can see it getting better. You can see it getting better over time. It, it changed even from the audios as far as the headphones to the microphones everything has changed lighting mm -hmm. all of that has changed they're slowly getting better especially with the conversations we're missing 
we're missing co-hosts that we've had on the show before. Yeah. Um, I'm just going to say Ricky Brown at this current time. Ricky Brown, Ricky Brown was a very pivotal point in the show. He bring a lot of insight, kind of like what you do, Mars. You bring a lot of insight to the show, um, a different perspective, and a kind of uh, even killed perspective across the board. Ricky Brown was present um, and willing to listen to both sides and give his points of views, uh, not favoring one side or the other. He's very cut down the middle. He'll give you his point of view, but he was willing to give you all sides and be fair in how he delivered. And you bring that to the table now. And we, we appreciate that. That's why we love having you on the show. Uh, we would love to get you all on the show together because yes. that would be a fucking yes. awesome show. Yes. Just to see how yeah, we know how we mesh together, and this is this is cool, but I would love to see that because it would make the show even more. Just like we have um just Jay coming to the show, uh another person that we had on Beer Combo and Family. Uh, he gives that other side of the thing where he had the military life. Mm -hmm. He's he's li he's lived the military life. He's lived the civilian life. He's at the point in his life where it's just like, yo, we get to a parent's age. I really have an opinion, mm -hmm. and I don't want to hold it back anymore. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, these are things that we we're looking forward to. We're also looking forward to the uh, entrepreneurial. Mm -hmm show that you have coming up we got guests coming on the show i know my cousin is ready to come on the show to talk about her things as far as the business and everything like that and i can't wait for you to meet her because she's another uh a part of what makes joey gg mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying not just as a gomez but in my personal but just being the person that i am you understand the fabric that i come from we don't have to hold punches. We're we're going to put everything into everything that we, we want to do. Even though the odds are stacked against us, we're going to continue to go. We continue to strive. Whether it's with support or not with support, we're going to keep moving forward till we fall off. Till the wheels fall off, we're going to keep doing it. That's why I'm here. That's why I'm willing to support. That's why, I, hey... If you tell me I need to be at a podcast, I'm going to be there. If you're on my podcast and we meet and everything is cool the way it's been cool, then I'm there. I'm support. I'm your day one. Mm -hmm. I'm your day one. Yes, you Your biggest been. fan. Yes, you are. I'm your biggest fan, and that's the way it's going to be. This is your man, Joey G. We're just going to keep it like that. Brandon, you see what it is. We develop. Yeah. We nurture. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Nurture and, <laughs> ri and rise to the top because cream always rise to the top, and we are the cream. Uh, once again, I want to thank Mars again for being on the show. Blessed to be. I can't wait to be on another Down the Den podcast episode with you, definitely. Um, Joey G, you already know what it is. You already know what it is. Um, I can't wait. You know, next year, Next year, I have a dream for next year, for the fifth year anniversary, which will be done in June. Not in August, but in June, <laughs> where it's supposed to be. <laughs> I was like, wait, you can change your anniversary? You can do that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's our anniversary. No, no, not yet. It is strange, it's strange, it is strange <laughs> because on, on every even year, I've done the, the, the anniversary podcast in August, ironically. <laughs> but... On that flip side, this I want to make sure that we, my dream next year is to do it live in studio, somewhere in New York. Okay. Invite Mars up to New York. Yeah, Joey G favorite. comes up from um, Atlanta. You know what I'm saying? And have Ricky Brown here from Maryland, down there in Randallstown. Mm -hmm. um, who else? Who else I would love to have on the podcast next year? Just of course. Jane. Just Jay, my cousin Prophecy, my cousin Ajman Yonkura, Blick Fraternity representing. Right. 
who else? And many others. I'm probably missing a few other people. But, of course, the ladies that have been on my podcast as well, uh, whether it's been Carmine, whether it's been Carmine! <laughs> Black Rose, whether it's been Miss Nadia, right. um, all the females that have been on the podcast provided insight and content. I would love to have you, 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 the women there representing because don't be scared. We don't bite. We we kind of handsome, but <laughs> passes passes pass. Pass, pass, pass is not passes is pass and uh, pass is not present. Come on now. Listen, we listen, all human. A, I, I think friend. I just put. My, yeah. I think I, I think I just shot myself in the foot because my girl gonna beat me up. But anyway, and, and my <laughs> we love my, you. <laughs> uh, my girl is going actually going to be hosting a podcast on the True Players podcast about our trip to Vegas by herself. Because okay. we can't, we can't have. See, the problem is when you we did Capricorns and Cancers, it's not a good mix. It's always clashing going on. So Capricorns and Cancers. Which, yes. Which one is she? Capricorn. <laughs> She's Capricorn. Capricorn. She see, see uh, Virgo, Virgos and Capricorns are, are the ones with no no Vaseline. Listen, with the, with the, I'm gonna, with I'm gonna say this right now. And I, hope, <laughs> I hope you're watching, Miss Danielle. I hope you're watching. We're cousins. We're cousins. I want you to know that I was born on the cusp, so that Capricorn <laughs> trait is in me. So you need to relax, relax. <laughs> but definitely, when she Much when she love. when she has the courage to step up, I mean, not she has the courage. She wants to do it. It's all about me setting it up. Oh, then, set, it um, up. set it up. It'd be, <clears throat> nice. It'd be nice. And I know she has a good point of view to put out there, and she has some things that need to be said. And yep. it'd be it'd be lovely to. It would be lovely to hear her point of view and see how she takes her brand okay. and, and runs with that. She does have a she does she does have a podcast on her own, but she's very shy about it. And when she talks about RuPaul episodes and all that fun stuff, she does have her own podcast, but she's very shy about it. So <clears throat> we'll, 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 <laughs> listen, listen. If I could, if I could take the L and go to a RuPaul show in Vegas, I took that L. Okay. Listen. I took that out. Hey, unless I, I, unless, <laughs> unless I meet the person in person, I, I'm not. <laughs> no, no, it wasn't. RuPaul was not there though. But you know, the, I'm just you know. saying, if I'm gonna go, I might as well go for the gusto. We meeting? <laughs> what is the deal? I'm here. <laughs> Most... <laughs> I'm here. It's your show. Where you at? That's listen, like going. It's like going to BB King's. BB King's not here. Why? Why am I here then? I don't want to. <laughs> I came for BB King. This is BBQ spot. <laughs> listen, we can make it all. We can make it all happen next next year in June, which is around my birthday. Ironically, the truth of the anniversary is two days before my birthday. So we can have a big grand old party in New York. Shoot the shoot the episode in the studio. You know what I'm saying? I'm actually in the process. Me and Georgie are going to be investigating some studios. Um, it's all about the actual um. The visual, the video part of it, how are we gonna do with the cameras, the camera scene? I, well, I'm not good at that. Probably, Mars, you may know somebody who could do that in the in the studio aspect with the cameras and stuff. I want I want my shit like freaking drink champs or or math Hoffa or um, easy, that's easy, some, something like that. You got no four K cameras straight off of Best Buy. It ain't, it ain't, <laughs> <laughs> you can you have posted posted in a floating. Come on, now this is not got you. that's not rocket science. We got this. <laughs> got you, got you. So that's my dream for next year. Thirteen years. <clears throat> <laughs> no, 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 no. Next year, 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 it's gonna be five years. You got no, five I'm years? just saying, you got 13 years of experience behind you. I got you. Okay, <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. But five years is gonna be special. Yes, it is, sir. Uh, yes, it is. Five years is on, on the planet. I'm definitely next year. It's my fault because I contacted Fairy Child a bit too late. I'm, I'm gonna be honest. She's probably watching the podcast. Like this nigga didn't never contact me to be on the podcast. Yeah, yeah. I sure, I sure did contact her. And when I thought about contacting her, it was too late. And um, she's also an entrepreneur as well. So she, entrepreneur, she created a baby entrepreneur. Entrepreneur. Her daughter's also an entrepreneur. Her little twin. So okay. I call her. They, they both twins. You know, saying so, you know, there's mother and daughter, but they both twins. That twin, she, twin, twin. Yeah. But shout out, <laughs> shout out to Fairy Child. I call her Harlem World, you know what I'm saying? So shout out to her. Um, and by the way, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. <laughs> please. Let's let's get the subscribers up for that. Follow and like my Facebook page, facebook.com, trueplayersdom. 
Follow me on Instagram forward slash True Players Podcast. And please, if you're a Forex or Bitcoin mining motherfucker, don't follow me, please. <laughs> cash, oh. cash only. Cash they, they even, they even, do, they even doing that. They didn't even doing that crap on Clubhouse. I don't, I don't know. I don't know about Clubhouse. It is immaculate. One, one of these. I, know, I know for every four hundred nodes, they get that one sucker that's like, yeah, man, random person that DM me. I think I will buy some Bitcoin from you. What? What you mean? I could put my picture no, on there, and it's my own Bitcoin. Let yeah, Yo, let's be, get it. Before, be, before, before, I end the podcast, guys. Did you know one girl who was a forex trader? Don't send me new, send me pictures of her just so I could do go invest my money with her forex. That's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just no, 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 I'm sorry. It wasn't new. It was it was very oh. provocative, provocative pictures. I, I exaggerate on that one, but very provocative pictures and stuff. Well, maybe you needed to see her portfolio <laughs> and diversify. In the, interest, in the interest of protecting my sexual health and, 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 and mental health with the female I'm with now, I cannot entertain stuff like that. No, it was more mental health. <laughs> physical health. And physical health. <laughs> oh, my God. Guys, it's a pleasure. We we gonna talk we we gonna talk offline um when we get an opportunity whether it's tonight or another time talk offline about the plans and stuff like that and just definitely definitely throw throw uh, ideas against each other but on 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 that note everyone ladies and gentlemen true place podcast we signed off peace peace peace.